Hello, this is Michael Tracy, and this video is going to look at how deaths on Mount Everest compare with deaths from medical errors. There is no shortage of videos about dying on Mount Everest. Videos with photos of dead bodies get a large number of clicks, and there is some macabre fascination with dying climbers. But this fascination with deaths on Everest is vastly disproportionate to deaths on other mountains, and as I'll show shortly, even from going to the doctor. In the over 100 years that people have been climbing the mountain, there have been 327 deaths, or about three per year, though many of those years had no climbers. Even looking at just 1953 to 2023, there were 314 deaths, or approximately 4.5 per year. In contrast, Mont Blanc reports about 15 to 20 deaths per year, though statistics for Mont Blanc are not as accurate as those for Everest. Outside Magazine cites a number of 100 deaths per year, but that number is not supported by legitimate news accounts, with a more reliable estimate being approximately 15 to 20 deaths per year, with climbing publications tending to vastly overestimate the risks. Mont Blanc has approximately 17 to 20,000 attempts per year, and using this 20 deaths per year figure puts its death rate at about one-tenth of a percentage point. Some of the bodies on Mont Blanc remain frozen in the glacier for decades, and while not on Mont Blanc, 75-year-old bodies were discovered in 2017 in Switzerland, and yes, they were wearing hobnail boots. Mont Blanc also has a trash problem, with the mountain sometimes referred to as Mont Noir due to the large amount of human waste on the mountain, and yet we do not have the endless stream of self-righteous videos about deaths and trash on Mont Blanc. But for most people, they will never climb Mont Blanc, nor Mount Everest, and thus their chance of them dying there is zero. Nor will they have to experience any of the trash they like to complain so much about on YouTube. In contrast, nearly all people living in the United States will visit a doctor. So what is the chance you will be killed by your doctor? Well, that depends on who you ask. I'm going to look at a recently published article in the British Medical Journal, which is a legitimate medical publication. The article was published online in August 2023 and picked up by various other publications and news sources, including by CNN, though it looks like CNN had a preprint of the published article. First, I'll talk about what the article says and then get into how it borders on charlatanry. That is, it is a post-truth style article that is hyper-technically true, but when you look into the actual details, it does not say what the headlines state it does. In the article, medical errors are responsible for 371,000 deaths per year and 424,000 permanent disabilities. The researchers note this is not cause for panic because there is less than a 0.1% chance of serious harm related to misdiagnosis after a single healthcare visit, which is coincidentally your exact same chance of dying while climbing Mont Blanc. So an article that states it is about as dangerous going to a doctor as it is climbing Mont Blanc should set your Yeti senses tingling. Let's look at it a little further. Splitting that into deaths as opposed to total serious harm, it comes to 0.0875% that you will be killed after a single doctor visit. Comparing that to Everest, there have been 29,016 attempts to climb Everest. Of those, 327 people have died. That is about 1.1% for Everest and only 0.875% for people after a single doctor visit it would seem that Everest has the high ground. However, doctors have the advantage that you will see them many times. Now, you could add up, add up all the numbers you visit the doctor and multiply those out, but there is a much simpler method if you can accept the simple fact that the probability that you will die is 100%. Although in hundreds of thousands of years of human existence, this statistic has been shown to be absolutely true. For some reason, it is the most difficult for people to accept. Given that there is a 100% chance that you will die, and according to the article, 371,000 deaths per year are the result of medical errors, this gives you a whopping 12% chance of being killed by your doctor. Now, before you run out and cancel your health insurance, let's look at what the study actually says. This is not the first time such a study has been published. Back in 2016, a similar study was published, and it had similar problems. A couple of these problems are worth looking at as they are commonly used in statistical charlatanry. The 2016 article received a lot of traction because Neil deGrasse Tyson tweeted the results without providing any type of analysis. A doctor from the UK debunked his tweet, and I'll link to his video in the description. Although he is referring to the 2016 article, little has changed in the analysis since then, with the 2023 article actually increasing the percentage of deaths caused by doctors. That video goes into much more detail, and I'll just highlight two of the larger errors, as they are seen in a large number of so-called scientific studies. 
The first problem is the use of definitions to alter the meanings of words or phrases. Here, the term medical error has been redefined to mean anything that does not achieve the intended outcome. And while that definition is loosely related to the concept of medical error, simply providing a patient with a treatment and having that treatment not work does not mean an error was made. The patient might be one of the many people non-responsive to such a treatment. In any case, using such a definition injects a significant bias into the study, as any estimate will massively overstate the number of legitimate medical errors. The next major problem is extrapolation. While any type of statistical prediction involves extrapolation, care must be taken to ensure it is warranted. As explained by UK doctors in the video, they took doctor visits by people over the age 65 and extrapolated that out to all doctor visits of any kind, including those of pregnant mothers on routine wellness checks. Regardless of the problems with the articles, a statement that there is a 12% chance that your doctor is going to kill you should set your Yeti senses tingling. If you wish to go through the entire article to spot the yak done, it is easy enough to spot. It should be noted this was published in the same journal featured in my last video on medical yak dung, and the redefinition of common terms was the statistical charlatanry used in both the articles. This leaves us with the odd situation that we know more about deaths on Mount Everest than we do about deaths in United States hospitals. But can we determine whether you are more likely to die on Mount Everest or be killed by your doctor? Unfortunately, we do not know the true number of people actually killed by doctors each year. The UK doctor cites a study that he claims estimates the number to be around 25,000 per year, but his math is a little off. He was doing the entire video while driving his car, so it is not surprising that his math is a little wrong. But let's fix it up and see who is more deadly, the mountain or the doctor. The article he cites in the video is a study of UK doctors, and ignoring any potential differences between the UK and US medical systems, the results of that study were that 3.6% of hospital deaths are avoidable. The number of in-hospital deaths is around one-third of the total deaths. For 2016, there were 2.7 million total deaths, and using one-third as in-hospital, this comes to 900,000 in-hospital deaths. From that, 3.6% were allegedly caused by some type of medical error for a total of 32,400. By comparing total deaths on Everest to the estimate of 32,400 medical deaths for 2016, we are left with Everest killing 1.11%, while doctors kill 1.12%. Thus, if you only climb Mount Everest once in your life, you are more likely to be killed by your doctor than the mountain. Now, have you ever noticed how much medical waste is left lying around?